Şirenlerin ahir ve akıbetlere hayır ola. Ağır ezbacı, tahire tevladı Resulü Eshab-ı Güzün Efendilerimizin Sayın Emmiya Zem ve Resulü Fiyan Hazretin Erbaş Şeriflerine Birimiz Bilal-ı Habeş Radıyallahu Anh Efendimizin ve alel husus bu caminin bayinisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman ve izin kayınlarının ve kahve-i ihlâhı ve nervâhı için Allah rızası için el-Fâtiha. Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. İnna Allah ve melâikedehu yüsallun alel nebi. Ya eyvellezine amenu salli ve aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahü ekber Allahü ekber Allahü ekber Allahü ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayya aleyhissalam Hayya aleyhissalam Salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehamedullah Teala, nasafiru neşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Ve şerü enne seyyidina Muhammedin abduhu ve habibuhu rasuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi. Uzvacı ve ashabi tabi hulafe rahşirin mahadin. Min ba'di ve zelimati ala tahakik. Khususen minhum ala imati hulafe rasulü ala tahakik. Ömer el-Mü'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bekir ve Osman ve Ali ve Ali Bekir sahabe tabi'in Rıdanullah Teala aleyhim ecma'in Ya eyyuhal mü'minul hazirun İttekullah Teala ve teyuh innem ellezine teku ellezine hum muhsinun Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillah Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin والسلام و تم و تسلیم علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد و لعالی و صحبی اجمعین. All praises are due to our Lord, Allah سبحانه و تعالى, who has created and honored the children of Adam, and created us in a sunny taqwim. All praises are due to our Lord, Allah سبحانه و تعالى, who on the day of promises asked, "Am I not your Lord?" And all of us replied, Yes, Bala. All praises are due to our Lord, Rabbul Alameen, who blessed us by giving us the honor of being from the Ummah of His Chosen One, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi sallatu wasalam. And all peace and blessings be upon the light of guidance, the crown of creation, the most honored one in the divine presence, Rasulullah alayhi sallatu wasalam. All peace and blessings be upon the Holy Prophet who said in his hadith, Sharif, send salawats and salams upon me in abundance on Juma, because your salawats and salams, they are presented before me. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Nabil Ummi wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma, sahbi wa salim. Ayyuhal mu'minun, O believers, the days and the nights of the month of Allah Shahru Rajab, they have departed from us. 
and the days and the nights of the month of the Holy Prophet, Shahru Sha'ban, they have left us also. And the days and the nights that is left to us is not too many. In this month, there is a month of the Ummat. We are in the Jumatul Wada, the farewell Juma, preparing to say goodbye to the month of the Ummat, the holy month of Ramadan. But before this month ends, before the holy day of Idul Fitr enters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the believers a great opportunity to attain His mercy, to get His forgiveness, and to get the freedom from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a night in the month of Ramadan that He is describing in the Holy Quran, saying, Indeed, we sent the Quran down during the night of decree. And what can you make, and what can make you know what is the night of decree? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend by the permission of their Lord with all decrees. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. This night was given as a special grant to the Holy Prophet. He was looking to the other nations and how long their lifetimes were. Seeing that some of the people of the other nations, they were worshipping non-stop. Some for thousands of years, some for hundreds of years. And he was thinking, Ya Rabbi, if they are worshipping non-stop for hundreds of years, and the lifespan of my ummah is short, they are going to reach to higher stations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforted his beloved, who is worrying for us, saying, I'm giving you one month. One day, one night to your nation. If they are showing the proper respect to that night, I will give them 80 years of rewards. 1,000 months. Just like they have worshipped for 1,000 months non-stop. Just like they have worshipped their whole lives. So this night that we are looking for, it is a gift that is coming to the Ummah to Muhammad as a wasila from the Holy Prophet and the Holy Prophet is saying about the night, Seek out Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights, of the last ten nights of Ramadan. So it is in this precious time that we are in, that we must be running to seek, to look for this holy night, Laylatul Qadr. And why is Holy Prophet telling us to look for Laylatul Qadr? Why is it that all the awliyas, all the mashayikhs, all of the ulamas, all of the alims from the time of the Holy Prophet until now are encouraging people to go and run and to try to find that Laylatul Qadr. Because Holy Prophet is saying, whoever stands in prayer and worships on the night of power with complete faith and with sincere hope of gaining reward, all his previous sins, they are forgiven. In this night, we may be able to find forgiveness. Each one of us we must sit and we must ask ourselves. We must sit down and make real tafakkur, real meditation to ask ourselves, what did I do from the last year, from last year until today? What have I been busy with? From the time that I came into the age of responsibility, what has the pen been writing for me? And we must sincerely ask ourselves that on the day of judgment, are we going to be from those people that are receiving the book in our right hand or those who are receiving on their left hands? Or those ones who are receiving their books from their backs? Are we going to be the people that Allah is describing in the Holy Quran saying, some faces that day will be bright, laughing and rejoicing at the good news. And other faces that day will be dust, stained, darkness will cover them. Such will be the disbelieving, the wicked. We must sit and make it a reality to ourselves, asking ourselves, how am I going to be when I enter into my grave? Am I going to go to that VIP area that is for the prophets and the saints? Or am I going to be there with snakes and scorpions, with all of my bad deeds waiting for me? The three holy months we have passed in front of our eyes. The night of Ragaib, the night of Miraj, 
The nights of Barat, they have all come and gone. Allah is giving us one more chance in these holy nights to run to Him, to beg for His forgiveness and for His support. And when we are really looking to the way that we have been living our lives with sincerity, we must run to sajda with tears in our eyes to beg our Lord for His forgiveness and to renew our intention to live and to die for His sake. In these nights, O oh believers, in these last nights of the holy month of Ramadan, we must run to fix and to change what we have done in the previous year. Because it is in this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is loving to forgive His servants when they are running to ask Him for His forgiveness. Perhaps our whole lives have been filled with disobedience. But in this one night, that is better than 1,000 months, we can change the wrong things that we have done to, to good deeds. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the hadith of Qudsi, O son of Adam, so long as you call upon me and ask of me, I shall worship you for what you have done. And I shall not mind. O son of Adam, were your sins, if your sins is so much that it will reach us to the clouds of the sky, and if you were to ask forgiveness from me, I would forgive you. O son of Adam, if you were to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and were you then to face me, associating no partners to me, I will bring you forgiveness as great as that. Holy Prophet is saying that whoever has been deprived of the night of power, he has been deprived of something great. If we find our Lord forgiving, and we do not ask for forgiveness, it is a great dishonor. It is a great loss to us. So in these last nights of Ramadan, we must force ourselves and step on our egos so that we can taste this blessing. If we spend these last days of Ramadan in the right way, then perhaps we can be of those ones that they can really celebrate on the day of Eid. Because the Holy Prophet is saying, on the night of power, Jibrail alayhi salam, he comes down to the earth with a group of angels praying for blessings for every servant of Allah that they see that they're worshipping, standing or sitting and they're making a zikr of Allah. Then on the day of Eid, Allah will boast about them to the angels saying, Oh my angels, what is the reward of that worker who has done his job very well? They replied, O oh, our Lord, his reward, it must be given to him in full. To this Allah replies, O oh, my angels, verily my servants, the males among them, as well as the females, they have performed their obligations well. And they are going to go to the eat prayer ground. And they're going to raise their voices, praying to me. And Allah is saying, I swear by my honor, by my majesty, and by my highness, that I shall surely answer the prayers of these people. Allah then addresses the people, Go forth, I have forgiven your sins, and have replaced your evil deeds with good ones. These people then return from the Eid prayers in such a condition that their sins have been forgiven. O believers, let us try in these last nights to find the forgiveness of our Lord. Then perhaps we can be fitting to the hadith that is saying, the fasting person has two occasions for joy. One when he breaks his fast because of his breaking it, and the other when he meets his Lord because of the reward for his fast. Amen, amen, amen. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah.
family members and all the saints and our Shaykh Sahib al-Sahib Shabbat al for this Juma, this farewell Juma to be blessed for us that we get the blessings <coughs> of this uh, Ramazan that all our wrong actions during this month it will be forgiven that they clean it up and they present it back to us as a good deed some may have worshipped a little bit. Don't ever think that whatever worship that we are doing is also something that is so great. The minute we are thinking that, the angels will throw it back to our faces. Our worship is filled with wrong things. That's why, in the Naqshbandi way, following the tradition of the Prophet, first thing that we do after we finish the Fars prayer is to ask Allah for forgiveness for the mistakes that we have done inside the prayer. If we're making mistakes inside the prayer, what about the mistakes that we are making outside of the prayer? May Allah have more mercy to us in these months. We are weak ones. And we're asking for the intercession of the Holy Prophet, uh, for us to gain benefit from this Ramazan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sit down.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Let us renew our religion first. Say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fatih. The most important thing, the most valuable thing, shahadat. All the worship, fasting, zakat, zikirs, hajj, everything that we are doing is to protect this shahadat and to make this shahadat to become a reality for us to experience this shahadat. Not just for us to say it with the tongue. Now we're saying it with the tongue. Because this is the declaration of our faith. If we begin with the shahadat, we begin clean, we begin pure, we begin correct. We're beginning with the shahadat and we're asking support from the Holy Ones, from our Shaykh, to send us something that is going to give benefit to us. This is not a scholarly association. This is not an academic association. This is not an association that we are reading from books. We are asking that walking Quran, the Holy Prophet, lay said to us, not to him directly too. It is very bad manners to ask directly. But we're asking our Shaykh, that one who is another walking Quran, because he gave up everything walking in the way of the Prophet. He has disappeared himself in the oceans of the Prophet, disappeared himself in the oceans of his Grand Shaykh. He has lived and he has passed from this world for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Islam. And when we ask support from the proper ones, the proper support is going to come to us. If we ask support from the wrong ones, if we take reference and knowledge from the wrong books, from the wrong people, if we are looking to speak according to our own knowledge, if we are asking to speak from our own ego, according to our own interpretation, then we are definitely not on the Sirat al Mustaqim, not on the way of the Prophets and the Mu'mins that Allah has given description. What is the description of the Mu'mins and the Prophets and the Mu'mins? In the ayat of Amana Rasul, that in our way we are reciting it every day, that very valuable, that very important ayat. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself spoke the ayat directly to the Prophet without Jibrail alayhi salam in the night of Miraj. What is the reply of the Prophets and the believer? Samina wa ta'na ghufranaka rabbana wa ilaykal masir. Samina. We hear and we obey. And to you is our return. Very important. The prophets and the awliyas and the salihin, they're not giving reply to Allah, I'll think about it. Or what you say to us, let's talk about it. Let's debate. This is what I think. Because people are twisting. This is the age of fitna. Ayat of Allah. Haq is open. But they are twisting everything. When the Quran says think, it is to think with the will of Allah. It is not to think with the will of your ego. 
When the Quran says think and meditate, why you don't think? It is to use the intelligence that Allah has given, not to use that intelligence, so-called intelligence that shaitan used in that time where he says to Allah, you are wrong, you're making me to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. You are wrong, I am right. Not to take the intelligence, so-called intelligence, arguing, debating, giving interpretation, like our ego. That Allah is saying, who are you and who am I? Who am I and who are you? And our ego is saying, you are you and I am me. Samirna wa atana gufranaka rabbana wa ilaykal masir. We hear and we obey and forgive us because we are returning to you. Don't return to your egos. Don't return to shaitan. Return to Allah. Beginning with the shahadat, keeping that shahadat precious and valuable, putting that shahadat high, that shahadat has nothing to do with us. That shahadat is Allah and His Prophet. The shahadat is not even complete if we don't put the Prophet in it. That is the whole key. Because now Allah locks you in. Once he puts the Prophet in there, he locks you in. Because everyone who just says, La ilaha illallah, without putting the Prophet wasalam, in there, in reality they are declaring themselves to be the messengers of Allah. They are declaring themselves to have the right to interpret, to judge, to do anything that they want. Even if Allah is saying to them something clearly, They say, well, it's up to me what I think it is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this great religion of Islam, He has locked everything and saying, Say la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Renew your shahadat by saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Because now we have an obligation. There is a condition to La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah is not according to whatever you think, whenever you think, like today's shaitan dajjali people saying, we need diversity. We need diversity, diversity, differences. We need differences, we need disagreements, but according to the ego. Yes, Holy Prophet is saying, The differences in my ummah, it is a mercy. You think he meant the ummah killing each other is a mercy? You think he meant the ummah fighting with each other and destroying everything of each other, it is a mercy? Do you think the differences that is happening in this world right now, in every country, amongst every Muslim community, the bloodshed, the torture, the tyranny, the cruelty, this is a mercy? Isn't this difference? No. He says, the differences in my ummah, that they are not fighting with each other, that these are just different ways, but reaching to one point, reaching back to me, Holy Prophet I'm saying, important, then reaching to Allah, that becomes a mercy, because now, you may choose whichever road that is there, that is going to fit you more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has locked the shahadat with Muhammad Rasulullah Because now, that one is our guide. That one is our prophet, dunya and ahirat. Sayyidina al-awalil wa lahirin The first Sayyid and the last No others Those who are following him who have finished in his way Those who walked in his footsteps
footsteps. Those who have disappeared into these oceans, they become a part of him. When we hold on to them, we are being brought to the Holy Prophet. The Holy Prophet is the doorway to Allah. Never you be able to reach to Allah unless it is through the door of the Holy Prophet. Allah has put that condition. Allah has put that condition to all of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put that condition to all the prophets. 124,000 prophets and millions of saints. Allah has put that condition. There is no exception. And Holy Prophet is saying, unless you follow me, if you don't follow me, your end is going to be hellfire. And Holy Prophet is saying, elaborating on that. But the way to follow me, it is to follow those ones who follow me. Because he did not even leave that open. 1400 years ago, Prophet came. He left. Two billion Muslims may say, okay, we're going to follow the Prophet. But we're going to follow the Prophet, and we're going to look at his words, and we're going to interpret as we see fit. We have to make ijtihad. We have to make tafsir of the words of the Prophet. Because Allah says we have to follow. So we are following the Prophet. Holy Prophet has locked that also. He did not leave any room for debate or interpretation with that. He said, Islam will be split into 73 different groups. He didn't say Islam will be split into 73 different groups. And it is a mercy, all these groups. And all these groups are going to enter into paradise. And all these groups, they are haq. He did not say that. He said Islam will be split into 73 different groups. 72 of them. They are bounding towards hellfire. One group will be on the Sirat al One, not two, not three, not four, not seventy. Seventy-two groups bounding to hellfire. One group will be saved. He didn't close it there too. So that everyone now can claim, oh, I'm that group. Every group now will claim, I'm that group, I'm that group, I'm that group. Everyone is in Siratul Mustaqim. But we don't see any reflection of paradise. Because if you're in the Siratul Mustaqim, where is your destination? Paradise. Instead, this world is turning into a hell. That means the 72 groups, they are ruling, not the one group. He didn't leave it there to say anyone can claim that they are from the one group. Because they asked him, which group is that, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, they are those who follow my sunnah and the sunnah of my sahabis. Extending that, saying those who follow this, my sunnah and the sunnah of my sahabis, and those who follow the sunnah of my sahabis, and those who follow those who follow the sunnah of my sahabis, and that continues until judgment day. So even that is locked. If you find yourself deviating from the sunnah of the sahabis, then you may find yourself in the 72 groups. You're saying, well, there are so many sahabis, I may choose any one of them. So does that mean, shaitan's logic will say, well, 
I'm going to choose Ibn Salama. He was a Sahabi. He was the one who chose the world over Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Even accusing the Prophet of taking bribes. People can say, he's a Sahabi. He didn't make shirk. He just disagreed with Prophet a little bit. I can follow his sunnah. Isn't that Siratul Mustaqim? So I'm twisting, saying, well, I'm following the sunnah of the Ahlil Bayt. And Ahlil Bayt, they are fighting with Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman. So that means I am the one that is in Siratul Mustaqim. Ahlil Bayt, that they are on top of our heads, that they have sacrificed dunya and ahirat for Allah, and they are fighting? Fighting? Hmm, something to think about now. The Sahabi Kiram, after the Prophet ﷺ had passed, they did not break away to say, now everyone is independent. They came together. And he elected one head. That head was already chosen by the Prophet ﷺ, by signs open and closed. And that is Hazrat Abu Bakr. After him, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, and Hazrat Ali. The head has always been one. So, the Sunnats of the Sahabis are those ones, only those ones, that they are taking the title of the Sahabi, companion of the Prophet, because they have completely lost themselves in the oceans of the Prophet. We're not talking about the Munafiks. Hasha, Astaghfirullah. We're not saying Sahabis became Munafiks. We're not saying that either. There are so many hypocrites pretending to be Sahabis. The only difference is the Shias, they say the majority of the Sahabis, they are Munafiks. And we're saying they are Munafiks, hypocrites, who's pretending to be the Sahabis. And their signs are clear. So, the important thing is to follow the Sahabis who follow the Prophet, not to follow those ones who broke away. Musaylama Kazab, the liar, he met Prophet too. He took knowledge from the Prophet. Ibn Allah, they are saying, Alim Zulama is saying, if you meet the Prophet one time, you just see him with your own eyes one time, you're already a Sahabi. He took knowledge from the Prophet. Is it too? But what happened? Did he follow the sunnah of the Prophet? So this is simple, isn't it? They left the sunnah. You can declare whatever it is. But you left the sunnah of the Prophet. You can declare that you live together. You eat everything you're doing. It. As Yazid was holding hands with Hazrat Hussein. They were playing. They love each other. But you left the way of the Prophet, alayhi so, are those the Sahabis that Prophet is saying we have to hold on to? That if you hold on to them, you'll be in Siratul Mustaqim? Come on now, obviously not. So, the doorway to Allah is through the Prophet, والسلام, and the doorway to the Prophet are those ones that they disappeared and they follow the laws of the Prophet that the Prophet put. And they follow his lifestyle strictly. And following those who are in front of them, who follow those who are in front of them. A chain, unbroken chain. That time, inshallah, Rahman, we will be in safety. 
Anything more than that, don't listen here and there. So many people are saying here and there. Well, Quran is saying for us to think. Quran is saying for us yeah, to be humble. So, well, I'm going to think humbly that I don't have to follow the four mazhabs or 1,400 years of Islamic scholarship. And they're going straight to the Quran. Quran is saying this. How they understand that Quran, I don't know. But they're saying now we're going to follow the Quran according to our nuts, according to our interpretation. Those who are using it, saying Quran is commanding us, Allah is commanding us, and they're doing harm in the name of Islam. And those who are using it to say, we're going to change everything. Because Quran says we can do that according to our own interpretation, that we don't have to hold any law that Islam is saying we have to hold. Both sides, they are wrong. May Allah keep us in the Siratul Mustaqim. We are following the way of Sahib al Saif, who is following the way of Sultan al -Awliya. And we want to be humble to say we don't want to make our own way. Salam al Kazab, he made his own way. And he fooled so many people too. Like right now, there are so many people who are being fooled. Maybe so many. Not so many. Some people. Only the fools are going to be fooled. Looking at someone. And that someone is saying, I follow. Share. Afendi. So I will say for so many years. If you want uh, him, then you must follow me. You may go. It's okay. Just as Musalim al-Kazab also says, I took knowledge from the Prophet. In order to get that knowledge, you have to come through me and declaring his own way. Declaring his own prophecy. Dropping so many things. So, may Allah keep us on the Sirat al-Mustaqim. And the way of our Shaykh. We are not even coming close to understanding our Shahada. Definitely. But, we are keeping at least our intention clean and pure. And when we keep our intention clean and pure with that shahadat, that shahadat is powerful enough to clean us from our wrong actions and from our mistakes. And we come out of it clean and pure like a baby who just came from the mother. I mean, Allah tawfiq. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you. May Allah raise the station of the Sultan al awliya and the Sahib al Sahib higher and higher. May this Jummah be blessed. May our Ramazan be blessed. May all the mistakes that we have done, the sins we have done in the past, sins that we are making this month, sins that we are going to be committing, may Allah forgive us and make it easy for us. May all the obstacles that is in front of us, may we have more strength to overcome them, to become better. All that we want is for our Shaykh to be pleased with us. That is all that we're looking for. Because if our Shaykh is happy with us, Prophet is happy with us. If Prophet is happy with us, Allah is happy with us. And we are happy with our Lord. Al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any questions anyone has? Say. When the Ramazan finishes, the shaitans become unlocked again. What can we do in the last days of Ramazan to give more protection to ourselves so that shaitan doesn't sit on top of us again when it comes out? Stop on your ego. Shaitan can only have access to us through our ego. Shaitan cannot have access to us any other way. Shaitan's door to harm us is through the ego. How are you going to stop Shaitan from harming us, from whispering to us? 
Don't listen to it. How are you going to do that? You train your ego. That's why the month of Ramadan is to train your ego not to listen to the whisperings of shaitan. It's not to recite some things here and there. there, there. All those things are supposed to work. It's like you're learning how to make a medicine, but you're not eating the medicine. You're reciting all these things, but you're not taking it. We should. And that is one way. So, what do we learn in the Ramazan? You must think what we learn. What have we gained in the Ramazan? Once we are holding on tightly to that, and once we are used to stepping on our ego, then shaitan will not be able to penetrate so easy to us. Ramazan is not just about not eating or drinking and having relation. It's about not being upset all the time, controlling your anger, controlling your jealousy, controlling your stubbornness. So all those things, that's in the Naqshubandi way, we just don't do it only in the time of Ramazan. Every day, every week, every month, every year. We are concentrating on that. So if you are keeping that kind of wakefulness of your ego, wakefulness that at any time he may trick you, then it does not matter whether it is Ramazan or Shawwal or Jumal Ahir. The same training you are holding on tightly to the same precautions that you are taking. And that time, yes, you will not be tricked by shaitan so much. Other things come into it. Of course, we have to have a jamaat. Of course, you have to have the uh, prayers of the awliya Allah. Of course, you have to have sohbat. But everything begins with the intention and taking that one small step. Inshallah, may Allah make it easy. Fatiha. If you don't have any other questions, inshallah Rahman, yeah, we will see you later. Eat, inshallah, wherever it's going to be. Isn't it? No, we have Sarbaz Kursu this Friday, Thursday, uh, Sunday. You're sleeping. Inshallah, we'll meet you at Sarbaz Kursu after spending Layatul Qadr. Who knows? May Allah make it easy for you. Fatiha.